much for joining me. Really appreciate your interest in this video. This is not a woe is me video, okay? I really want to get that out of the way first. So it's no secret that there are certain people that are struggling in the world because of the pandemic and how the economic situation has affected us individually. And let's just get that out of the way. I am one of those that has been majorly affected by the economic situation. I am also an orchid grower. And we know that orchids need a lot of light in order to be able to photosynthesize, perform and bloom out. Certain deficiencies can come when orchids don't get enough light. This is my first season where I'm very, very conservative on how much light my orchids are getting, simply because the electricity costs here in Spain have shot through the roof. They are at an all time historic high. Every day, another record is broken. So I want to talk to you about what is going on. This is going to be my reference video when it comes spring, summer, because we might be seeing some side effects in my collection due to the fact that my orchids were not getting enough light through this winter. Here's what I'm doing. This is my indoor setup when they're all cooped up inside if outside conditions are not favorable. I have one setup right here and anybody who doesn't like blurple lights, look away in three, two, one. All right, so this is my middle rack where I have blurple lights. I do not distinguish between shop lights, full spectrum or blurple. I have my setup as it is based on the convenience and the location of how lights can be strung up. The reason that these orchids are on this stand is not specific to the fact that it's blurple, which is more growth encouraging, etc. Some are strategically placed, but not all. It's about space. It's about how I can fit them in. Right, so that is one section of lights that I have. And I'm going to switch the blurple lights off again, and you can look back now, and the lights are off. I know that blurple lights are not to everybody's liking. Now, to the left here, I have a second set of lights. You can see the shop lights up there. This is my second section, which I will also use on a different level because all the orchids here on the left, they are easily moved outside the moment there is sunshine and I am not risking any rain throughout the day, making it hard to bring them back inside dry and not wet in their crowns. So shop lights, just normal regular shop lights are up there because the top is very slim and it's about getting the plants as high as they can grow without being affected by the shop lights. They are super slim. I really like them. They came from Ikea. Oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago. My middle rack and my left side are the first two lights that I ever installed in this space. So again, it was just a matter of what would fit best. And seeing as I'm renting, I don't want to be punching too many holes within a certain parameter of my ceilings. All right, I have another set of lights though. So let's have a look at those. Now, it doesn't look like much, but trust me, the lights that are down here, where I have mostly my summer bloomers or the ones like bulbophyllums that do not need that bright light, they are on the bottom shelf of this baking rack. Now, these lights were installed at Christmas of 2020. Somebody sent them to me and they are amazing. They do provide enough light for anything that I have down there, especially my summer bloomers that we know are very high light orchids. So there's two shelves beneath this string of lights right here. I have a fourth source of light, which I will show you right now. There it is at the far end, my terrace door and the outside. That is the source of light that I use most. <laughs> but the reason I'm telling you all this is, again, as a reference video, but the electricity rates here in Spain will drop to their cheapest rate from midnight to 8 a.m. So depending on which orchids have been outside and which have not been outside, I am rotating continuously so that everybody gets enough light, be it under a specific light or outside. I'm hoping this makes sense. So we had some very cloudy days, meaning the center shelf I targeted in such a way that one night from midnight to 8 a.m., the center shelf was on all by itself. At night, the glow of that center light reflects off the white walls, not exactly targeting all the orchids that are around it, but there is a reflection that does help, especially if you consider the ones here on the left. Now, 
The ones here on the left, as I mentioned earlier, they normally go outside every single day when the sun shines, when there's no risk of intermittent showers. So they get a lot of light for the great outdoors, and that could be five hours only. Now, imagine if and when I put on the center shelf with the purple lights, the reflecting facade, even though these guys have been outside, the residual light that they get from the center shelf bouncing off the wall will add to their light absorption for several more hours. Not as intense as the daylight outside, but then again, enough to extend the five hours plus the eight hours that I have the center rack lit up. So I'm hoping this makes sense. Sometimes it is sunny outside, but I cannot put my summer bloomers outside because they shouldn't be getting the direct sun. Because if I'm not on top of my summer bloomers while they're outside, the winter sun, because of the clear atmosphere, can be very, very strong and still burn the leaves, which I would like to avoid. So what I do is I have my summer bloomers on a table facing the white facade, but that table is in permanent shade. So the permanent shade outdoors will not have that pocket of warmth that summer bloomers like. So that area in the shade could be about 15, 16 degrees Celsius, whereas we know summer bloomers would prefer 18 to 22 and above in temperature. So I'm really pushing the margins here with light, but they will go outside if the temperature is around 16 degrees in the shade, benefiting off the reflecting light of my facade. And then when that center rack goes on, you can see that the lights are all the way down to the middle shelf, to the lower shelf. I've got another few rods of the purple lights. They will also benefit from the residual light at night. But if it's a really cloudy and cold day, the center rack, I keep that off and I focus and switch on the rack down here so that my summer bloomers do get some light that they very, very much need, no matter whether it's summer or winter. And then when I switch on my shop lights, I leave the lower lights off, but then these guys can benefit exactly the same if it's too cold or there's always on and off rain outside. And the shop lights radiate all the way through and down, not enough, but residual light, which is fine on certain stints. This is how I'm trying to juggle to get my orchids rotated with how much light can I afford to give them literally based on the current circumstances. So far, I am not seeing anything that looks negative, that has a negative effect on the fact that I can't give them 14 hours of proper light per day. But that doesn't mean it's gonna happen in about three months because this could affect any blooming I have in spring. So let's look at my Phalaenopsis up there. These are just complex hybrids, no IDs, the ones that you get in any supermarket garden center. They are not under any direct lights at all. They get reflective lights if the lights are on at night, depending on which light is on. They pretty much get what they get based on the daylight coming through the terrace door. And that is it. I'm just banking on the fact that these don't want such high light. But I'm going to predict now and we will follow up on this video in a couple of months when they bloom, that the bloom count is going to be much, much less because of the fact that they can handle a lot more light than we give them credit for. Doesn't equate to direct sun, but a lot more light and the fact they're not getting enough light will equate in less blooms. That remains to be seen, but it will be my follow-up video. And this video is a reference to the fact that my spring season may result in very, very few blooms, lots and lots of sheaths, but no blooms. And let me tell you something about this whole thing and why I'm doing this video. I am not worried about it. I want my orchids to be healthy. If I don't get the bloom count in spring as I would have gotten in previous years, those growths will still produce roots. That is important to me. So I just wanted to put this out there that I am really juggling how much light everybody gets based on the circumstances. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle that happens in my head. I wanna be so, so wrong with my prediction. So wrong because then this might help everybody in future who says, I cannot afford to grow orchids because I can't pay for the utilities that come with growing orchids. Because if orchids will still bloom 
despite their light levels being a fraction of what we hear that they really, really require to perform, this could be a game changer where everybody says it's far too expensive for me. I don't know if this was of interest. I wanted to put it out there and just touch base and ask if anybody is doing the same thing, trying to preserve their collection for the time of year that we are in and just be of encouragement that it is possible to grow orchids. They may not bloom as proliferously as we see everywhere else, but the orchids can stay healthy with a little bit of adjustments. So I'm going to revisit this video in spring. And this is the true light inside my dining room right now at around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It's a cloudy day outside, no lights are on, the orchids aren't outside because it is possible that we're gonna get on and off rain showers. It is far too cold for me to risk having them outside and the juggle of which light fixture goes on and which one stays off as the nights progress with this bad weather, it is happening right now. So last night we had Blurple on, tonight we are going to put the shop lights on at midnight. And then the following day, we're going to put the string of lights on for the summer bloomers. If the weather breaks and I get sunny days, all of this goes out the windows, all the orchids go outside. But that is how I go about trying to conserve energy and bring my orchids through the winter. And I'm going to take a deep breath when spring comes. Anyway, this was more to encourage. This was not a moan or a woe is me. I am blessed to have these orchids. And that is really the point I want to make. It takes a little bit more thinking, a little bit more calculating, but I am sure that it can be done. Let's hope, come spring, I was not wrong. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know how you're going about your winter. All of you in the Southern Hemisphere, lucky you, jealous, yes I am. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day, everybody. On one condition, though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.